she's definitely feeling sarcastic today, so to my American audience, go home. <laughs> Aloha! So the fact that I happen to be pushed out of a hoo-ha in this country seems to be the only thing I have to offer the world, apparently. I feel like that's a wee bit too far. You brought it on yourselves, I don't know what else to tell you. Even though the perpetuation of the stereotypical elements of the Scottish nationality makes me want to get stabby with knives, Scottish cinema it's not actually that bad. So I join you today to bring you some Scottish film recommendations because God help my soul if I'm gonna make anything related to Scottishness. It's gonna be something with some f***ing validity. Now it needs to be said that there are many things, many factors that can qualify a film as a Scottish film. It could be written by a Scottish writer, Scottish actors or actor may feature in the cast. It may be set in Scotland. It may have been filmed in Scotland but not set in Scotland. It may have been commissioned by a Scottish production company made by Scottish money. Many, many reasons. So here are some recommendations of some films that are either partially or or wholly set in Scotland. Emphasis on the word some. Don't go getting a stick up your butt because I don't list every freaking film known to man. The first film is The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie, released in the late 1960s and starring the one and only Maggie Smith. The film is set in Edinburgh and occasionally crammed. If you want to get the accent joke, you're gonna need to watch the film. The story follows Jean Brodie, who is a teacher at a school called Marcia Blaine, and she has some really unconventional teaching methods, to say the least. She persuades her girls to pursue art and love rather than their more factual studies. It's actually a really funny movie, and Jean's character is actually so interesting when you really, really get into like who she is. It's, it's really interesting to watch. Also, if you watch it and you like it, keep an eye out for the play popping up. I studied the play, God, what age was I when I first read it? I can't even remember. But I studied the play multiple times and I still enjoy it. It's probably one of the plays that if it came up, I would go back and see again and again. Our next film's a wee bit more recent and that is the 2010 release directed by Peter Mullen. Ned's. Now Ned's holds hooligan culture under quite a harsh light so in a few ways it might be quite difficult to watch because it doesn't really sugarcoat much. It doesn't so much reflect the culture now but for 1970s Glasgow which is when the film is set and where the film is set it keeps it extremely accurate. It gives the whole film a sense of authenticity and the acting in it is really really well captured and really well performed as well. They get right into the nitty gritty of something that I don't think people realised how deep it was. The movie shows the journey of a young boy in school called John and how he transitions through his childhood and adolescence from a prize winning high grade student to a knife wielding Ned. Now Ned, for those of you who don't know, stands for non-educated delinquent. It was kind of a catch-all term for people that fell into that lifestyle that was, you know, associated with drugs and violence and alcohol and just trouble in general, be that legally or just amongst themselves and other people. Film three, I have mentioned before in videos, it's Gregory's Girl. This is honestly one of my favourite films of all time and I don't exaggerate when I say that. Gregory's Girl is a light-hearted, funny, coming-of-age film that just has some really good characters. It's one of those movies that if you can watch it now and see past how old the film is because it was released in 1981. It is an old film in terms of what we see visually now. If you can watch it and look past that and see the story for what it is and embrace the humour of it, it can be such a good watch. The film was brilliantly written and directed by Bill Forsyth, who actually picked up a BAFTA award for best screenplay in 1982. 82, yes. And the film was also nominated for the BAFTA for Best Director, Best Film and Best Newcomer. So I highly recommend this one. It's just really good all round from a technical standpoint, from 
an entertainment standpoint and just as a great film. The next film most of you will probably know so I won't say too much about this one and it is Skyfall. The 23rd Bond film overall and the third for our current James Bond Daniel Craig. Now in the film we see James Bond return to his childhood home which is in Scotland and most of the iconic scenes around that part of the film were actually filmed in Glencoe, fun fact. Even though it's not my favourite Bond movie I'm more of a live and let die, Dr. No Gold finger kind of gal myself, but it is a great movie. It progresses the franchise really well. It progresses the story of Bond. We, we get to see a lot of what's under your skin. That's a teaser for another film. In general though, if you are a James Bond fan, would highly recommend. And just appreciate the scenery and some of the scenes. <laughs> very on point with my technical verbiage. Keeping it more up to date again, we're going with Sunshine on Leith for my next recommendation. Following their return from serving in Afghanistan, Davy and Ali, the two main characters, have to almost like readjust and reintegrate themselves back into day-to-day -day life, which for them is in Edinburgh. Fun fact again, that's actually where the title comes from. Leith is in Edinburgh. All about the facts today. And the sunshine part, we actually do get some, so please leave your stereotypes at the door on the way out. This is a rom-com musical film. It's fun, it's bright, it's vibrant, it's light-hearted, but it also doesn't shy away from the difficult moments as well. It actually shows them really well and it's a really nice contrast and balance throughout the film. Personally, I love this film. I'm not gonna lie to you. Obviously, I wouldn't be recommending it if I didn't like it, but the main reason I did enjoy it is the musical elements like there's this fantastic scene when everyone's singing in a pub and they're just having a great time and yes it is stylized sty style stylized okay love the scene is slightly style style the scene is slightly stylized we got there eventually because it is a musical and there's choreography and things like that so you can tell it's not completely natural but the whole ambience of that and the energy of that it's so, so authentic. I have been in many a pub where a very, very similar thing has actually happened. Scotland is a country of art and of music and of energy and like honestly stuff like that, it really does happen it, on your average night in a pub or even your average train journey you might find people having a wee sing song. So I just really like the fact that it held that authenticity and it wasn't in a way that was naff. Like, you could actually watch it and think, yeah, I can actually believe this. I know it's a musical, but I can actually believe this. And I just loved how it captured that part of a country. That's the part that matters. All the stereotypical stuff and the accents, that all the stuff that people gravitate towards mean nothing. It's it's the heart of it that matters. Also worth noting, this film is directed by Dexter Fletcher. We are talking Kick-Ass, Stardust, Eddie the Eagle, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man, Lair Cake. This is the genius that we are leaving Sherlock Holmes 3 in the capable hands of. If that doesn't convince you to watch it, I don't know what will. Now may I present to you my next recommendation, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for a gem of cinema in general, train spotting. This is a very raw film. It's a raw depiction of violence, drugs, hooliganism to an extent, poverty, so so many issues. The thing I love most about this film, because I look into things a wee bit too much arguably, is how the film manages to maintain authenticity. It looks very authentic and it appears very authentic while also incorporating really stylized scenes at times of mania or highs for the characters and it just balances out really well. Merging those two styles, which really should not be able to transition so quickly between the two and, and be able to kind of go off on their own tangent occasionally, like it, it shouldn't work and it does and it's fantastic. Remember earlier when I said there was like a teaser for another film? We've reached that point. I love this one. Under the Skin, released in 2014. This film is 
mind bending. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place because I feel like I could talk so much about this film. On the other side of that, I don't want to say too much because if this film translates to you in the right way, it can be extremely profound and not in a really ridiculous, artsy, like, up yourself type way. It's not pretentious in any way. You don't feel like you're being forced to digest something that's really hard to swallow because it's so out there, but it challenges you. Also, this is one of the best performances that I have seen from Scarlett Johansson. Like, hands down. Brigadoon! If it wasn't obvious before that I love singing and I love dancing, it is now. This is an epic, all-time great, must-see love story, the details of which I do not want to spoil. What I can say is the dancing sequences are just beautiful and energetic, the songs are fab, and there are so many likeable characters that makes this film quite an easy watch, actually, when you think about it. Again, this is an oldie, but a goodie. We're talking 1954, so mid-50s. So if you can see beyond that, you're golden. My ninth recommendation, I think, is a film called The Angel's Share. This film sees young and new father Robbie try to get himself and his family back on their feet using some unconventional and interesting means. I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been sitting trying to speak more about Angel Share for like the past six minutes and everything I say seems to lead to a spoiler so I'm just gonna cut myself off, okay? Angel Share, you'll enjoy it, it's funny. And to end today's recommendations, we have a horror movie because I can't help myself. It's The Wicker Man and I'm not talking about the 2006 Nicolas Cage remake reboot thing. This is the 1973 original. The whole story takes place on the Scottish islands which kind of gives the film a whole eerie isolated feel so bonus horror points. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, on the surface of it all the movie does appear quite slow to be honest and the major twist at the kind of climax part of the film by most horror fanatics nowadays will probably be very easily predicted. But it's important to remember that for the 70s, this was a wildly unusual and terrifying film. It was made in the kind of daylight horror revolution where makers realised that by having horror movies take place during the day, it would take away the safety that people feel in the daylight during horror movies. It would almost remove that safety blanket and it would be like nothing was safe anymore. If you can get attacked during the night, you can also get attacked during the day. In my opinion, it deserves to be appreciated. And believe it or not, that is us for now. I know some of you are really deeply vexed at the fact that I haven't put Braveheart on my list, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I would recommend the films that I just mentioned before I recommend to someone to watch Braveheart. Regardless, I hope you can get past that emotional trauma and you enjoyed the video. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big one of these and leave a comment down below if you watch any of these movies. If you have watched them, let me know what you thought. If you would like to see some other movie type related videos, I will put a playlist up there. And I'm also gonna put either a video or a playlist or some something's gonna go down there. Do you think I plan this part ahead of time? As always, these social medias are down in the description. But other than that, much love you guys and I shall see you all very soon. Bye.